Peekaboo, peek a peek a peek a boo. Someone is small and he doesn't like it at all. I kind of rhymed, I didn't even mean it. He's a king, he's a tiny king and boy does it make him cranky. The title is Tiny Cedric. This book was written by Sally Lloyd Jones, illustrated by Rainboat Watkins, best name ever. And this book was published by Random House Children's Books. Here we go. Once upon a time on the shortest street with the longest name in the biggest palace with the hugest throne sat the tiniest king. His name was Cedric, King Me the First, and he didn't like being small at all. Every morning, Tiny Cedric got into his hot air balloon and looked down from the sky. Everyone's so teeny, he cheered. I'm all big and tall and not small. At breakfast, he enjoyed reading his own newspaper, The Daily Me. He'd read what he'd done. How marvelous, he'd say. He'd read what he'd said. Oh, I agree, he'd laugh. He saw his photo, so handsome, he proclaimed. But sometimes he caught sight of someone bigger and remembered how small he was. So, tiny Cedric made a law. No one can be taller than me. Well, this was silly, of course, because people grow whether someone likes it or not. So Tiny Cedric banished anyone taller than him from the palace, which was everyone, basically. Next, he built a wall. Now, I won't accidentally see someone big, he said. Still, to be extra safe, he bricked up the windows and put up mirrors. Special mirrors that made him look gigantic. Everywhere he looked, he saw himself smiling back at himself. I am all big and tall and not small, he cheered. Perfect, except it wasn't. The next morning, when he came down for breakfast, there was no breakfast. Get my servants, he shouted. And then he remembered. He didn't have any. The only people left in the castle were babies. So, tiny Cedric hired them to perform the royal duties and mostly just to be smaller than him. But the baby presiding over meetings fell asleep in her porridge and the royal librarian kept eating the books. The royal scribe only knew scribbling. The royal dresser just kept undressing himself and the royal taster ate everything. It wasn't satisfactory. When the babies climbed the bookcases and brought them crashing down on top of the tiny king, it was the last straw. Help, he cried in an underneath voice, call the Royal Fire Brigade. The baby fire brigade arrived immediately. Unfortunately, they got all tangled up in the hoses and sprayed water all over his tiny vestments and sent a raging river cascading through his royal crown library into his tall shoes cabinet and out the front door. That night, the babies were too scared to go to sleep, so they slept in the king's bed. It wasn't ideal. The next morning, everyone woke up hungry. But 
since the royal chef only knew sloppy mush, the tiny king had to cook instead. Then the babies wanted to go on adventures. But since the babies don't know about shoelaces, the tiny king had to tie everyone's. By the royal duck pond, they cried for milk and cookies. So the tiny king had to fetch them their snack. And in the dandelion garden, they fell over and got boo-boos. So the tiny king had to kiss them all better. Finally, at nine o'clock, when the babies were too tired, of course, the king had to read them their bedtime story. In the middle of the night, when the babies woke up all crying for their mommies, the king cuddled them back to sleep. And then he issued a degree. All mommies must return to the palace at once, and daddies too, which they did, but strictly only kneeling to be safe. And every day the babies grew and grew as babies do until at last they were bigger than the tiny king. And do you know what? Tiny Cedric was fat, far too happy to even notice. Oh, tiny Cedric, you can't control other people like that. I like tiny Cedric. I hope this author writes another story about him. And I hope Rainbow Watkins does some more illustrating. I miss you, friends. Mm -hmm.